How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Masters Agree podcast right here on the No Holds Bar Network, your source for all wrestling podcast content and more. I am your host of the Masters Degree podcast, as always, your self-proclaimed greatest host and owner and CEO of the network, Kyle Masters. Today, guys, today for a very special episode of this Masters Degree podcast, I am pleased to welcome back two very special guests, so I'll go one at a time here. Number one, you may remember him from the such, I guess you can call it, big scandal we had here on the network one time where me and him, me and him had a little quote-unquote fight and uh, he uh, quote-unquote quit the network and then made a sudden return two months later. And that is Mr. Heel Turn 21 on, is that 21? I think it's 21 on Twitter. That's Brian. Brian, what's going on, man? What's up, guys? How you doing? Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, there's no uh, border restrictions that are going to stop the boys from getting back together. I uh, hope everyone's doing good, <laughs> except for you, Michael. I could really care less. Right? That's right. But Brian, I'm glad to have you back, man, here to talk some wrestling, some WWE, some lots of shit going on today. We got lots of stuff on the agenda. Just like you heard Brian right there, guys, we're joined by another second guest. He used to be an avid co-host here on the network. He is still the host that runs the West Coast. Hollywood. Actually, no, 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 no. We got to do this right. Got to do this right. Got to reverse here. We need to give him his old theme song back. DJ, hit that theme song. You. So good to me. That's right. I'm bringing back Michael Chow's theme song. He is the host that runs the West Coast. Michael Chow, what's going on, Michael? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. And action speak louder than words, buddy. <laughs> Yikes. Um so you really you really feel that way, Michael. You you really don't miss Brian as much as Tamina? Uh I don't appreciate you uh mixing around my words. Did I not say I miss Brian as much as I miss <laughs> Tamina? I like Tamina. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> she's, uh, a, she's a faster Nia Jax, so yeah. Oh, oh is that what she I is? Like that means I like Brian, so did you, did okay. you say faster Nia Jax or fa- yeah. never, yes, never mind. Faster never mind. Nia- Yes. Okay. All right. Let's go. Okay. You don't want people. You don't want the IWC <laughs> all over your back, there, Brian. Be careful. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I know this is an explicit. <laughs> this is explicit content here on the network, but I'm just saying. I don't want to go there. <laughs> Anyways, guys, welcome to the Master's Degree Podcast. If you guys listen to this podcast before, it's where myself, Kyle, I have some rotating special guests once in a while. Talk about some trending things going on in wrestling. Could be WWE, AEW, New Japan, whatever it is. We talk about it. We t- we give yourself. We give our opinions. On it, and that's what we're going to do today. Obviously, the main heading of uh, WrestleMania. Too dangerous for two nights. We'll get into that later. But uh, if you're new here, guys, welcome to the Master's Degree. If you're coming back, welcome back. Thank you for downloading the episode on all listening platforms on the No Holds Bar Network. Just want to give a quick update on the network, guys. Um, big things coming. I'm actually currently, me and Tiff are currently in talks with a lot of different indie promotions for some... Uh, I guess for some sponsorship later on, um, which is going to be great. Uh, we're working hard on a website uh, that's almost that's probably going to launch soon. Me and her have been working on it for the last couple of days, uh, adding some cool things. There's going to be um, some writer opportunities on there for people that want to write for the website. So we're working on that and some other cool things on that website as well. Um, so just a big update. The network is going to go through a big overhaul. As you can see, we already have a new uh, network logo. Um and now we have, we're on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. It's like hot. So much interaction going on there. So thank you to everyone who interacts on the Facebook page. And uh, thank you for anyone that's following the Twitter account as well. Almost at 2,000 followers on that Twitter account. So thank you very much, everybody. So let's get into this master's degree here. Um, you know what? Let's, take, let's, let's talk about it right away. You know, let's, let's dive into that main topic about WrestleMania, and obviously with the world as it is, guys, today, it's craziness out there. We're just kind of briefly talking about uh, what's going on in our own cities before we've gone on the air here with uh, COVID-19 being as big as it is and affecting sports in general. Um, it hasn't really affected the wrestling world too much. It's affected the indie wrestling world, as in promotions have been, obviously, with their cost, they've been forced to shut down. Unlike other major companies out there, they are 
continuing to continue. Now, I throw the first question out to both of you. We'll start with you, Brian. Do you think wrestling should follow suit like all major sports and just kind of stop until this is all over? Ah, that's, it's it's a hard one. It just it kind of comes down to how you see wrestling or, or how do you how it's going to be presented. Um, if it was a thing where it was presented as a lucha underground type of deal, where it was a TV show, which I mean it kind of is. I, I get why they're going, you know, why they, why they should proceed. Um, but you know, if you want to be presented as a sports type of show, uh, I don't know. I mean, the NBA stopped mid games mm-hmm. and canceled the rest of the season. Um, you know, I, I know these guys are getting tested before they head into the empty arenas and stuff like that. But I mean, you just you just never know. You never know. It, it, it's hard. I, I I'm mm-hmm. on the fence. It is, it is definitely hard because obviously the. <laughs> Wrestling and major sports is two different types of sports. It's sports and then it's sports entertainment, obviously. Um, but with wrestling, it's it's harder because there's more physical interaction than anything in professional wrestling. It's crazy. So exactly. for them to continue and other sports that, you know, they have physical – there is there is a physical aspect to it where, you know, there's two people clashing together. But they have shut down, and wrestling's not. It's a. It's again. There's a big gray area to that, and uh, I actually have an article from Triple H who's on ESPN Sports Center this morning, which I'll get into later about what he says on why the WWE is continuing to go through with this with COVID nineteen. But I want to throw the question over to Michael because I want to hear his opinion on it. Michael, what is your opinion on this? Do you think professional wrestling should follow suit and just kind of stop until this is all over? Well, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually agree with Brian. No, it's it's. It's weird, like, as a business perspective, you have other sports that are basically shutting down, and this is a way for to get more viewers than ever before because people are going to be at home and be like, I have nothing to watch. There's no basketball. There's no baseball. Maybe I will start watching WWE again. But there's a way to actually proceed with this. Like Brian says, Lucha Underground style, you can have a more edited, pre-taped type style. But when you get something like this where they're just giving us – 90% replays of previous WrestleManias, previous Royal Rumbles. It's just awful. I'm not liking it. You have to believe that why can't – I understand there's health-wise you can only have a certain number of people there during production. But there, when you have a company like AEW that throw in ideas like, hey, let's get some of the wrestlers to sit in as fans – these are smart ideas, but then you get people like WWE and they're just like, here's just a whole bunch of replays and, you know, here's some matches. Here's – here's a we're going to – I assume we're going to talk about it later. Here's a whole bunch of WrestleMania matches that were thrown together last minute that have no build. So it's mm-hmm. – uh, it, it's, it's, it's 50-50. It's not working for me as the way they're putting a show together. But then again, business-wise, they're pretty much the only thing on right now. As yeah. sports wise, yeah, well, I, I I definitely understand where they're coming from with that in terms of business. Like you, this is this is it's it's bad to say that it it's going to take a virus like this to have an opportunity to boom their business, but at the same time, you know, you want to kind of protect the people that are in your business from getting something like this, right? So for them to all and, and you you're you're almost breaking the borderline sometimes because you think about it these. States that are coming out like day by day now that the, the the social gathering number is is shortening like day by day and right now I'm I'm almost certain if is Florida at the I'm pretty sure Florida is at the ten person mark. Yeah, I think ten's a pretty safe number across the board. I know we are here in LA, so yeah. you so you think about it. you have the two wrestlers a ref. There's three. You get the two or three commentators. That's six. You're left with four people to fill cameramen, uh, like stage people. You have to like the, the, there has to be the six foot distance, and it's a lot to put into perspective when you think about every like how many people are are behind the scenes on a regular basis. And like if this was a regular episode of Raw in a stadium, right? You think of how many people and how many personnel are there. It's it's crazy that they can still do this with little personnel and everything. So, yeah. again, it, it is also a gray area. 
you know, like they're they're a form of entertainment and it's a form of something to watch while this is going on. But then you're looking at it from the other side, like, okay, what are they actually doing to protect? Is this the best way to protect their own staff as well? Yeah, I mean, not only that, but what are the two basic things they're telling us not to do? Don't be within six feet of each other and don't travel. These guys are traveling to the show and these guys are literally right on top of each other. Like, what could be any worse? Mm -hmm. So... In saying this, um, it looks like after WrestleMania, Derby is going to be taking a big, big step in what they're doing with their shows. Um, an article came out today saying that Derby has uh, can- officially canceled all events for the month of April due to the coronavirus pandemic. This means that the Derby Performance Center tapings will have to continue, um, obviously, with the, you know, the current virus and the state that it's in. So, uh, it looks like as of right now, they're going to continue to tape episodes and not have them live for the month of April. So they're going to be taping well in advance to keep, you know, more than to have the, the safe number, you know what I mean? In that safe zone of 10 people. So it is what that is. I don't think at this point in the world, people are going to care if it's live or not. You know what I mean? It's... They're, they're working for what, what they have to do. So I applaud them for still trying to do something like this. But again, you're, you're, you're reaching for that gray area. Now that this, it's going on after WrestleMania, like why, why can't you just take kind of like the month of April off? Why, why do you have to continue after WrestleMania? Not only that, but why not just hit a whole reset button on how they present the show or where the show is heading? Our, you know, one of the biggest complaints is you know, part-timers, storylines blah 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 you have access to movie studios they have connections with fox they have connections with universal why not take two two days out of the week and and make it a cinematic experience as opposed to the same i mean i'm sorry but these empty arena matches are boring Mm -hmm. you know i i I get it that they're fun for the first hour and then it's like okay but what what has everyone been talking about recently the promos the promos on raw the promos on raw edge taker Orton, it, it's the cinematic approach. I think they need to go that way. Uh, taking a whole month off, I don't know. I mean, what else are you going to watch? I guess that's the only – the business end is like what else would you watch? I mean, you could, so pick, I that. You, you could pick a random pay-per-view from the network to show on live TV. Yeah, but then you're just going to show how much better wrestling was back then than it is yeah. today. <laughs> it, is, it is tough. Um, now – Michael, what do, I, I kind of want to get your piece on that too. Do you think they should be taking a month off after WrestleMania and just kind of wait out and see what happens with the curve? They could, but honestly, Vince McMahon would never allow it. I mean, Vince McMahon wouldn't even stop WrestleMania. It, it, it's Vince McMahon could be the only one at WrestleMania. It'd be Vince McMahon versus Vince McMahon and a Vince <laughs> McMahon match. This guy's going to put on the show no matter what, but they can they they got to think of other ideas. For me, honestly, and then Brian mentioned it. Why not a reset uh, as far as styles concerned? Why not have the draft in a good draft right after WrestleMania to say, hey, um, well, we're going to have the draft and find a way to actually put a really good draft together. You know what I mean? This could actually stall time and, you know, they're going to put in replay. So just have a draft. Bring back the old draft where people redraft the entire roster. You got They got to think of ways – to stretch out the shows because showing all of these replays is just absolutely horrible. I hate it. I yeah. hate it. All the <laughs> matches, the matches have been short because they're worried about the fact that without no fan noise, they're going to hear the wrestlers call out, you know, the moves. So that's mm-hmm. why you need to end the matches really quick. And it's, they got to think of other ways to present the show or they got to think of other ways to put content out there. Cause the replays, they're not working. Yeah, they're that's... really not put out the draft. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. That's a it's an interesting idea. I always love the WWE draft. It's uh, always my favorite thing to watch because just drafts in, in in general in sports is always exciting to watch. Um, it's a little different, obviously, when it comes to wrestling as opposed to other sports out there. But uh, the way they shake up the roster is is definitely something they could. I, I kind of agree with you, Michael. They can do something big here that you know will make people want to tune in and say oh my god okay so this is this is actually something worth watching with you know an arena with no crowd and and from the pc so i actually really like that idea 
Now, they're all, all something that's never been done before. You have fans that are sitting at home doing nothing because they're not supposed to go outside. Have like a first ever fan fantasy draft. I know it's big in football and whatnot. So just be like, hey, we're going to do a draft and we're going to get the fans involved in this fantasy draft. And if you win, you'll get you'll get, I don't know, two first class tickets to WrestleMania if WrestleMania is still going on next year. Right. And yeah, in, okay. in, in Brian's neck of the woods. So Brian. Hey, hey, hey. Don't you take that away from me. Don't you dare take that away from me. (laughs) Brian is getting to WrestleMania next year no matter what. He's hopping the gates. He'll be there. It'll be me versus Vince. I don't care. I mean, (laughs) I'm just going to say that new arena, SoFi Stadium, looks absolutely beautiful. So having WrestleMania there is going to be incredible. It is huge. As big as you think it is, it's bigger. Like I went to the forum a couple weeks ago, and the forum just looks like, a dot compared to that stadium. It's Big enough huge. not to have in one night. <laughs> yeah, 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 I see what you did there, sir. All right. So we did talk about with Raw and SmackDown and rescheduling and all that stuff. Um, let's talk about WrestleMania itself. And obviously the main title of this podcast, you know, is it too dangerous to have in two nights? Well, they have 16 matches on the docket. Um, obviously we can't have 16 matches in one night or you're starting the pay-per-view at noon and you're ending it around midnight. So a 12 hour pay-per-view. No one wants to watch that, especially with no crowd. Um, obviously the, it, it, this has gone to show that the crowd does make a massive difference in a wrestling show. Um, it, clearly this has been the point to prove that with all wrestling companies that are wrestling without crowds right now. Um, as for WrestleMania itself. Um, I want to ask both you guys your opinions on that because I want to know what your your stance on it, and then I'll give mine. So, Brian, to you first, do you think they should still go ahead? I know it's a little late now, but do you think they should still go ahead with WrestleMania or postpone it another month, another two months? Selfishly, I want to see a WrestleMania just because I want to see what they're going to do. What What's going to be so different? Like you said, WrestleMania is this over-the-top, you know, huge crowds, pyro, the whole show. If you're going to go completely opposite, go completely opposite, but go all out in a good way. If, if that makes any sense, go completely. Show me a movie for the next three hours. You know, do I think they should postpone it? I think so, just because. Did you follow on me here? No, okay. no, sorry. I was just oh, adjusting okay. my <laughs> camera. I was, I'm sorry. We, we, we talk oh. on Skype, guys, so I just had to adjust my camera, but I turned it off back. So, but keep going. <laughs> um, yeah, do I, do I think they should reschedule? Absolutely. I mean, just think about those, those guys and the girls in the locker room. Like, as much as you want to call this WrestleMania, it's not. You know? It's, it's, just, it's not the same. You need the crowd. You need the pyro. Shoot. I, I'm going to get heat for it, but move it overseas. Why couldn't you have it in London? You know, why couldn't you have it in, in Saudi Arabia? I mean, I think London's locked down too, right? Yeah, but, I think right now you know, it's it, it's to a point where, you know, you, you you can't move anywhere. You can't move superstars yeah, you're, anywhere you know or travel. You're right. You can't move them anywhere. You're hardly going to get back. Um, and I mean, I, I would just postpone it. But selfishly, I'm excited. You know, I want to see what they're going to do. Right, right. I think it's, the, it's that's the main thing, right? It's, it's, the main thing that's going to pull people is how are they going to pull off WrestleMania in this fashion with all the rumors that came out of they've taped in multiple different sets, not just the PC. There's multiple locations that they've done this in. So, Michael, I turn it to you now. Um, are you on the fence of postponing WrestleMania like a month or two months from now? Or are you on the fence of keeping it on the same day and working what with you got? As of right now, they got to do it. You know, before I used to think they can't postpone it because they probably already wrote a whole bunch of scripts. You know, they got people there like Brock Lesnar and Goldberg who may not be able to do it another time. But since I see what they're giving us right now on TV where they're just throwing stuff together, no real big builds and whatnot, and you drop off a whole bunch of money at their front door, I'm sure Goldberg and Brock Lesnar will come back. So honestly, they should have just postponed it. They really should have. They should have. I hear they're moving the Hall of Fame to uh, to SummerSlam now. You might as well yeah, just... that's that's a little strange right there. <laughs> that's gonna yeah, be that's a little weird. weird. So yeah, they should have just honestly just postpone it until this thing died down, and and it's it's the right move because now since they're not postponing it, their major matches that they were supposed to do, a lot of them aren't even happening. Roman Reigns has dropped out due to his health. You know, I hear Miz is not going to be able to perform because. They, he he drew a fever and they told him to go home. So now, 
not to go into spoilers, but the, the tag team championship, which was supposed to be a ladder match, is now going to be a singles match, which makes no sense because it's for the tag titles. The Andrade is now out with an injury. So much stuff is changing the card. It's now come become a watered wow. down card. I don't even know if we're going to get the matches that we want. It's just a matter of time before WrestleMania is this weekend, right? Wouldn't be surprised if something goes down, McIntyre's out, Brock Lesnar's out, and Vince, like I said, like we said, is going to be in all of the matches. Yeah, so, well, yeah, there you go. from what I've read is that uh, last week, it was about Monday or Sunday of last week is when Florida came out and announced that as of Thursday of last week, you know, no gatherings of more than 10 or it was the, the 10 the ten limit mark. And WWE said, okay, we're going to tape all of WrestleMania up till Thursday and WrestleMania is going to be completely taped. Now, I don't know how many matches they taped. It wasn't released how many they did tape behind the scenes, but I'm assuming a majority of the matches were taped behind the scenes so that when they go live this Saturday and Sunday, there's going to be some matches that will be taped and some matches that will be actually be there, like live right there in person. Obviously, you cannot gather everybody in the same building for WrestleMania for any of those two days. So that's why they did all those tapings last week. So it's going to be interesting to see that. That's that's I, for sure. I think everything, honestly, has been taped by now. Because I think they had to tape all the way until the uh, episodes of Raw and SmackDown after WrestleMania. Because I think they're, they're yeah. shutting everything down. They say they have until this date to shoot everything. Otherwise, you know, yeah. And, otherwise and that's that's the thing about these deadlines for shooting and stuff like that. It's like, you know, like I said, selfishly, I really want to see what they're going to do. But it feels like we're literally limping into WrestleMania. You know, at first it was like, okay, they have the greatest wrestlers in the world. They have the greatest production company in the world. What are they going to do? Now it's like, okay, this guy's dropping off. And this guy's dropping off. And this match isn't happening. So it's like, okay, we're going to get to WrestleMania. We made it. Now what? That's the one weird thing, too, the, the with the people dropping off. Um, it just makes me to think that the last couple of Raws and SmackDown were taped because Roman dropped out a while ago, or at least the word went out that he dropped out a while ago, and they are still advertising him up until, was it yesterday? I believe someone pointed it out that they were still advertising Roman. Yeah, I, I think I saw a tweet today about it. Roman has since released a video himself saying that he's dropped out of WrestleMania, apologizing to the fans. So you have Roman himself in a video saying... I'm not going to be in the match, and they're still they're still showing it. Now, a lot of people will say it's pre-taped, right? So, But it doesn't make any sense. Just cut that out of the show. Does Michael Cole need to tell me Roman Reigns versus Goldberg is still happening? I think it's because Vince, in a way, he wants the kids to have hope. I don't know. This might sound stupid, but he's like, well, it's Roman, right? If I say Roman's not going to be at WrestleMania, I'm going to lose all these fans. But that's in the mind of Vince. But yeah. it's, So I'm curious to see what, what they're going to do. Like, is it going to be this SmackDown this this Friday that they're going to announce Strowman's in? Because I didn't watch Raw yesterday, but did they announce at all that Strowman is going to be the replacement? Because that's what all signs are pointing to. I I haven't seen anything like that. I mean, I think Vince is, you know, resting on that whole card subject to change mentality, um, which is really crappy because, I mean, it, it's like if we don't, does he think we don't read the internet? Does he think fans don't know what's going on? You know, it, well, especially when Roman it. came out and released the video. <laughs> exactly, your own guy is saying I'm not going to be there, and it's like, no, yes, you are. No, I'm not. That's why I had actually, uh, you guys remember Corporate Cappy bring up to me yesterday that what if this is a a work <laughs> for what? <laughs> it's like, uh, like it's just a weird work, like. Like, he's coming out and saying he's not going to be there, but Darby's not acknowledging it. He just, he finds it extremely weird how they've not acknowledged it yet or, or have announced a replacement in the damn pay-per-views this weekend. So if it is a work, like, who exactly is he expecting a pop in the arena? <laughs> you know, I think they're expecting sense. a oh, TV Roman. pop. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> they're expecting the TV rating to jump as soon as he's shown on TV and everyone buys the pay-per-view and tunes in. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but that doesn't make sense because you're only going to be watching the pay per view. You're right. only going to see it if you already bought the pay per view. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's just, <laughs> it's just, I want to know what they're doing because it's weird, a little bit weird, and I, I'd say a tad unprofessional that you have not announced a, a replacement or have acknowledged the fact that he's come out on video and said he's not going to be there. 
Like, why hasn't even the it's you know what I find funny is that what's that one Twitter account? The the, the WWE on Fox Twitter account. You notice that they tweet a lot different <laughs> than the actual WWE Twitter. Account. Oh, yeah. Dude. <laughs> those, are, those are straight fans tweeting right there out of the Fox. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm shocked that they haven't at least tweeted about it or something. So, I don't know. It's weird. So, it, it's just strange. Like, how have, you, how have you not said something? Like, is something planned maybe for this Friday? It's just weird. So, I see where you guys come from on the point of, you know, moving WrestleMania. My honest opinion is I understand the business side of it that it's really tough to move, right? It's with everything that ties into Darter to be – it's it's tough to move something like that. Um, I, I it's I'm on the fence about it to be honest. And uh, actually, was it uh, Jim Ross? Uh, he actually gave an opinion on what they should do, but he also said that he understood the business side of it as well. But he said he would have, and this was on. Uh, he actually called into the Wrestling Observer Live, and he said that instead of running it, he would wait until this is all over. And make this a giant celebration WrestleMania. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine if WrestleMania was the first gathering of people? Yeah. That would be huge. It, that would the be tickets huge. would go fast. You'd have celebrities coming in on it. They could pull in every single TV station imaginable to, or every single pay-per-view network imaginable to want to sell it. Well, not only that, you have Fox. You know, it would be so huge. You put it on Fox, it would freaking outnumber the Super Bowl. You know, I, I would put it on for free on Fox to reach, right? you know, 20 million viewers. Why wouldn't you? It's, it's interesting. Mike, what do you think about that? Yeah, I I totally agree. I mean, you know, I can you imagine the pop when this is all over and they had the first show with actual fans in there? I mean, it doesn't matter. Roman will come out to big cheers. Cena will come out to big cheers. Everyone's going it, to – it's going to be the biggest pop of the night, so – they, yeah, it, it, this should be a celebration, and I totally agree with Brian. Throw it on Fox, have it be like Super Bowl. They can collect a lot of money from advertisements like the Super Bowl does. This is this is something they honestly should have waited on. They should have postponed this. So yeah. it's it's tough, man. This disease has definitely taken this world by storm. Like <laughs> I feel like it was only like yesterday that I was still at work and. I was actually at my job when the bomb dropped, so to say, in our in our I guess our uh, our country. Um, I was at work, and then it came out. I think it was two hours before the end of my shift that all and I work at a casino, so all casinos in all of Ontario were shut down. And I was like, "Oh man, this is real! Like this, if they're shutting down all casinos, which are a major money pull for the country, the province, or the city at the, the city that they're in." This is re- this is for real. Like it hit me like a, a brick wall. Like this is crazy. So I remember that this disease is, is is definitely affecting a lot of things. And in terms of WWE, I want to want to bring back Roman into this. There's actually concerns going around backstage from a lot of the WWE sources saying that they're worried about Roman's long term future in terms of what if another pandemic occurs that he's still going to have to like be backed out on TV again. Apparently there has been uh, there, there's talks backstage that his health is becoming more of a concern, which I mean it does kind of suck, right? Like he, he, when you're diagnosed, you're diagnosed with a disease like he has, who you know he puts that puts him at the high risk at the top. I'm I'm shocked he's appeared on TV as much as he as he has with this virus still going on. So it's it, I understand it's really tough for him. But then I, I do see what, where WWE is coming from on that subject. Like, it's it's tough to have some guy you're built, trying to build the company around when he's got one of those diseases that could come up whenever in the next who knows, right? And what if another pandemic happens and, you know, he's going to be another high-risk guy? So it is tough. Uh, I get it. But, I mean, at, at that point, wh- why is it a concern? Who cares? This is a life. This is a human being. You know, it, it's bigger than wrestling. I, you know, if – if this guy doesn't wrestle another day and, and lives a full, healthy life, I, I'd prefer him to do that. Right, right. Sorry. <laughs> so why, um, you know, why is it a concern? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, why is there a backseat? Like, why is that even yeah. a topic? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not trying to be a downer or anything, but, like, who, who 
you know, it's it, weird. It's, it's, it's tough. I, weird. when I read that, you I know was what like, I mean? are, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Like why, why, you know? Yeah. And then just, that's just the way wrestling is. It's just so dumb. You know, sometimes it can just be so dumb, you know, like you have the NBA, you have other sports that don't treat their people the way these wrestlers get treated, you know? And, and for it to be a, a concern of the WWE's backstage, it's like, be more concerned about the human being, not about your, your product. Right. Right. Um, other than that, in terms of this fiasco, um, Fight, Fight TV. Everyone knows Fight TV, right? Every, I'm sure yes. you guys have, are aware of what Fight TV is. Michael, I'm sure you are as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Fight TV is actually getting in on WrestleMania. It's announced today, actually, that they're going to offer WrestleMania for the first time ever, both in the U.S. as well as select international territories. For the oh. first time ever on Fight, uh, they're going to offer both a two-day weekend package, both in English and in Spanish, uh, in addition to a custom live chat so that viewers around the world will have the opportunity to enjoy a live discussion of the event. Customers will have the option to purchase uh, the Saturday, April 4th event or the Sunday or buy them as a weekend pa- package for an additional savings. Um, it hasn't been released yet of what the prices are going to be. I imagine it'll be the standard uh, pay-per-view buy. What was going right right now, I believe, is thirty six ninety nine per night. So oh. uh, that's huge. I mean, huge for a company like Fox the Art Fox Fight to get in on this. Yeah, and uh, it looks like WWE is just trying to rack up all that money they can. <laughs> um, which kind of now that I think about it, that you know, going back to the whole. Why haven't they announced the Roman Reigns um, match being canceled? It's like they're kind of waiting to that last minute, you know, to announce things to just try to grab all those all those bites. And, and I don't blame them, you know. How much money are they losing not being in Tampa? Right. It's a business. It's a business, and I get it. Wasn't there also another little baby company on on having pay per views on Fight Network? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to throw that in there. Hmm. Right. I'm not gonna go there. Anyways, um, there was there was yeah there was the fight that was going on. I didn't have anything else much here for uh, for WrestleMania and the, this whole pandemic. Um, I from what I gather from all of us here, we're both on the side of postponing, or should have been at least postponed. Uh, and then you know we also both all agree of where they're coming from on the business side of the perspective. Um, so that's actually, you know what? We'll continue with WWE. I just want to touch base on one little more thing. Um, Cause I haven't particularly been keeping up with the product. I've watched highlights that's come around in my timeline. I haven't actually sat down and watched an episode of raw or SmackDown in a long time. I've tried to keep up with NXT. It's been tough for me, obviously running the AEW side of the, the network. I've uh, been obviously my, my attention has been focused on AEW. Um, I want to know what your guys' opinion is on the current product right now when it comes to Raw, when it comes to SmackDown and NXT, if you do uh, do watch it. If not, that's all right. So we'll start with you, Brian. What is your what is your view on the current product right now? What what do you, How do you feel it, it, where it's at right now? Should it be better? Could it be better in some ways? What, like, what's your view on it? Um, I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of like what product, you know, I I think I'm starting to watch it just by habit. It, it's it's really boring. You know, I, I was a diehard. I, I've been watching my whole life. And it used to be 5 to 8, Monday, do not bother me, I'm watching Raw. Now it's just like, I turn it on, replay, empty right. arena. Okay, I, I can go do something for the next three hours. And that's and that's wrestling all around. You know, AEW, I give them credit. It's fun. You know, I, I'm a spot monkey. I love the, the dives and stuff like that. So at least they're trying. Um, it's just, it's, WWE is just so boring. You know, and it's, I didn't want to watch the shows two years ago. Why do I want to watch that same replay today? It, I, I, I don't know. I, I prefer them, just like I said, we talked about earlier, do a complete reset of the product. We don't know how long this is going to last. You know, people say a month, two months, who knows? Why not just start fresh? Give us something completely, completely different. Because this whole replay, replay stuff is just, it's not working. Yeah. Um, from what I've caught, and I know, like, before when I used to do RDB reviews, like, I used to sh- – <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I used to shit on the product a lot. Like, that was that was my thing. I just – I saw a lot of negatives more than positives. 
Um, I think nowadays I'm, I've kind of broadened my horizons a little bit. I do understand. I think I'm understanding more the business side of it. Um, I do still have. I'm still a stickler for storylines. I think the biggest thing with me is that some storylines are just they don't make sense, or they're they're kind of like they're too dry. Like they could. It almost seems like they could put a little bit more effort into it, and they don't. Like you can you can start, kind of sit back and see if you look at the storylines from the outside, you can see where they're actually actually main focusing on and where they're being lazy. And it's not just WWE. It's kind of like everybody in general. Like everyone, every company kind of has their their yeah. lazy storylines going on where they don't put that much effort into it and it kind of just it takes the back seat. It's just it's a shame in that term because some of the wrestlers that are put in those storylines are actually like the, one of the best wrestlers on on the roster. Like I see tons and tons of potential in the WWE because they literally have the best roster on the planet out of any company out there and I dare you to fight me on that. Uh and this is coming from a guy who's dropped WWE out like a like a bad habit. So um they have the best roster that's ever been produced and they just, they don't, they don't flourish with it. It's like, it's almost, and it, and it does go back to what a lot of people say. Vince has too many toys in the basket to play with. So he doesn't know what to do with all of them. It's, it's almost like he has too many of them and the roster needs to be even trimmed even more. So it is, it is uh a predicament, and that's how I kind of feel on today's product. But uh, I want to hear Michael's opinion on today's product, Mike. I imagine you've been keeping up with what's going on. What what, what do you got for us right here? It's uh, it's fifty fifty. You know, Raw slowly been getting a little bit better with Paul Heyman and kind of taking the fold on being the creative director. But SmackDown, oh my gosh, it's the worst. It's the worst I've ever seen it. And I used to be a huge fan of SmackDown. It's it's I can't believe they let Bischoff go, and it's gotten even worse. And it's how do we get back here when Goldberg and Lesnar or the part timers are going into WrestleMania as champions? And it's it's I don't, it's it's almost as though they're they're completely afraid to go full on what works because I mean I'm kind of enjoying what they're doing right now with Edge and Randy Orton. It, it's 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 really good. It's almost like you have the whole little bit of attitude era still back in there, but it just feel like they don't want to go all the way. Right. It's like they'll never go back to where it used to be, even though a lot of times people are saying, oh, this whole Attitude Era thing is coming back. Oh, Paul Heyman, you know, all of this. And more people seem like they enjoy it and are tuning in, but they don't want to go full throttle on everything. Now they're bringing back Goldberg. Goldberg's being Bray Wyatt. And it's it's they're making a lot of mistakes that they really can fix, but they choose not to. It's like... Every now and then to give the fans what they want, but in reality, it's a Vince show, and they'll never allow it to be a fan show ever. So yeah, um, I do want um, to touch base on the one thing you said there, um, Edge. Um, incredible! I can't believe that guy is actually back in wrestling. Um, when I I didn't watch the Royal Rumble, but when I heard that he came back, I instantly had to turn it on to see what the hell was going on and i could not believe that this guy is back into wrestling after what he went through in the surgeries he had that is an incredible story i cannot believe edge is back and i'm I, I i'm loving it to be honest because edge was one of my favorites to watch back when he used to be in, in there to be at uh regularly so that's an incredible story in, insane if i could to um you know First of all, I'm a, I'm a little proud of you there. Uh, I know that back in the you know back in the day we used to kind of go at it with this whole AEW WWE NXT thing and and you know just kind of bashing products just to bash it because it was a cool thing. Um, glad to see you're kind of expanding oh, like well, your horizons, you, as you said. Um, and on that note, I think what really needs to come out of this whole you know this whole situation we're in is <sighs> we need to just start liking what we like and what i mean by that is just stop going on twitter and, and bashing things because it's cool to bash you know you you guys brought up orden and, and edge you know i i'm not going to name any names but uh, you know on twitter when the when orden dropped his first promo to start the feud what was everybody saying oh wwe has to rely on the old guys i'm not going to put this promo over this is just typical wwe right orden sucks he's old blah 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 What's everybody talking about this week? The promos. Orton and Edges should be the main event. You know, uh, Undertaker and AJ. You know, it, it's just, it's, it's been this way for a long time. I remember Bray Wyatt when 
the first Fiend video came out, everyone crapped on it. Everyone oh, yeah. crapped on it. And I'm not going to toot my own horn or whatever, but I was just like, just wait. Wait. You know, wait. Why can't you just sit here and be like, okay, let, let's see how this plays out. And what did he do? He became one of the biggest guys again. Mind you, WWE did drop the ball. But we, we need to stop this whole going online complaining about AEW, complaining about WWE, complaining about NXT. They're all going to mess up. Everybody messes up. You know? Yeah. No it, one's it, perfect. There's not no a company one, no out one. there that's perfect. As much as Derby is the ultimate powerhouse company because they have been for for years and years, they mess up. No company out there is is doing is giving you a perfect product with no mistakes. Yeah. And that's why I say let's just – let's see what happens this weekend. What if this is one – what is one thing we all can agree on? When WWE's back against against the wall, that's when some of their best stuff comes out. You know? Yeah. And 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 who knows? They can just completely turn this around and we can say, wow, this is one of the best presented WrestleManias of all time. You know, it doesn't have to be five star matches. Sometimes wrestling can be fun being a, a movie, being silly stuff, being you know, the brood was yeah. awesome back and then. I th- and I it's think like, we're gonna get that. that you know? I th- yeah, I think we're gonna get that with this WrestleMania. I think we're getting a lot more cinematic. We're going to get a lot more cinematic movie type of mm-hmm. wrestling. We're going to get, especially after they announced that, or they didn't announce, but it was said that they taped WrestleMania in multiple locations with closed sets. So mm-hmm. um, and, and it's just going like to be we loved, one. Just like we loved and put over Lucha Underground, if WWE presents it the same way, it, why can't it be cool? You know, just because it's a WWE. You know, just like AEW, I, I'm not the biggest AEW fan, but I love some of the stuff they're doing recently. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, well, you know, it's AEW, it sucks. Like, just just watch it, enjoy it. You don't have to, don't go in there not liking it already. You know what I mean? Because then you're just not going to enjoy it. Don't waste your, your, your two days because it's too big for one day. Don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you said it there. Um, one thing I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't crap on it but I, I i tweeted about it today it was funny because someone pointed it out i'm like oh my god is it actually in there um alexa bliss kind of dropped the ball today oh um, yeah <laughs> i don't know if you've seen michael but alexa bliss is set to face uh oscar and kari zane well maybe oscar and kari zane for the women's tag team championships at wrestlemania match hasn't ha- technically happened yet on tv but for some reason, Alexa decided to put one half of the women's tag team champions in her bio. Mm. Maybe yeah. she's going by Japan time, no? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike, I can always count on you for a laugh, man. I missed that. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Awkward silence. No, but uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I can honestly say they have a chance since it's pre-taped to actually put on something pretty big. And it's for performers like Brock Lesnar and Goldberg who may not be able to put on like more than five minute matches. If it's pre-taped, I don't see why they can't put on a great match. You might, I wouldn't be surprised if they could pre-tape this, if Goldberg might have a 20 minute match. Bear in mind this is pre-taped. He can honestly tape like maybe five minutes, take a break and (laughs) tape some more. Heck, you can even have like I don't know CGI have Goldberg put down Braun Strowman with a with jackhammer. Can you, you imagine? Know, you never know. <laughs> or they have like they mess up and Goldberg is like they 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 tape one half of the match one day and the next day and Goldberg forgot to put forgot to put the right trunks on. <laughs> he comes out with like different trunks. It's like oh yeah, he switched trunks really quickly when the camera was turned the other way. Woof. Goldberg is fast for his age. What am I over? Oh, is that wire? Is that wire on Braun Strowman when he got him up for the jackhammer? Oh, look at oh all that God. wires right there. I just thought of like the part in Austin Powers when Gold Member with Fat Bastard and the wire thing, right where he flips over all the the people in the in the in the the pool there. Anyone remember that? Yeah. No. Anyone seen Austin? You guys have seen Gold Member? Come on. Yes. Yeah, my show my age right now. <laughs> no, that's one of the best movies ever, dude. Yeah. So. I don't know. They, Michael's right. They have a chance to do something different, do something that's going to make people say, "Okay, well, no, that's that's pretty cool." You know, they they like uh, they did a good job. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do on Saturday and Sunday. Too good for <laughs> too good for two nights or one oh, night. <laughs> Can you imagine Braun Strowman just flipping over all kinds of CGI crap and explosions going off and? 
going to be awesome. I, you know what, Brian, I'm not going to put it past Vince McMahon to, you know, sit there in his office. Obviously, no one else because social distancing. You know, he's going to be, it's going to picture one of those long ass tables. And uh, Kevin Dunn walks in on, in this meeting and uh, sits down at the one end of the table. Vince McMahon looks Kevin, looks him straight in the eye and says, you know what, Kevin, the floor is yours. And just lets that guy go nuts with CGI everything for the entire weekend. So don't put it past them. We've seen the CGI crap they do in the big arenas with the crowd, you know, the entrances, with the, the, the dogs, with Roman Reigns and all that crap. Don't put it past them to do that plus a thousand. <laughs> so, Dude, as cheesy as it sounds, like how awesome would it be? We're talking about them going away for a month or so, kind of like maybe doing a, a season finale or whatever. Like, what if Braun Strowman, his thing is, you know, I'm not done with you or whatever. He just like, they're the last show on the last night. And like, he, you know, he destroys Goldberg. He starts tearing down the arena, all CGI explosions and stuff. And he just like grabs a camera, looks at it and says like, all right, I'm finished with you. And then cuts to black or whatever. Like, simple. <laughs> it's a movie. It's hey, a movie. It's like, hey, hey what if those, uh, what if those pictures of Drew McIntyre in Scotland lifting the boulders? That's actually part of the movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Did you guys watch that video? No, I haven't. <laughs> oh, dude, it's so cheesy. It's amazing, dude. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that's it for that. Um, I don't think I had anything else. Give me one sec. Let me just review here. Yep, we went over that, 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 and that, that, that. Um, last bit of tiny bit of news. Not really much, but it has not had. <laughs> surprisingly, doesn't have to do with WWE. Um, AEW. Yes, Mike, or Brian, calm down. Um, AEW. <laughs> Never heard of wrestling. Them. Yep, great company. Oh, okay. uh, they are now, for the foreseeable future, going to be filming in undisclosed locations. I guess uh, Daily's Place won't be used anymore after this week, and Dynamites will be filmed in undisclosed locations, and they will not be releasing that information because they don't want fans waiting around the arena for autographs and such. So there's that. And uh, New Japan has canceled all their events for April. So uh, this virus location. continues to go. Yeah, Un- undisclosed is it like mankind's dungeon under the arena or something? <laughs> I don't know. I could not tell you. Anywho, um, I'll leave you guys with one last question here. Uh, I'll start with you, Brian. Any match out of the entire weekend on the card? Which one are you looking forward to the most? Because I'm hoping they go with the whole movie feel. I know you guys are going to hate me, but who is the two, probably two of the best actors they have on the roster right now? Well, one's part time and one's full time. Uh, I don't know. Well, one's a real actor, John Cena and Bray Wyatt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think, I mean, come on, guys. They're both amazing actors. They're, Bray Wyatt's going to do some crazy, who knows what the hell is going to happen. And, and and Cena, when he wants to work, he can work. So I, I'm looking forward to to that the most. Okay, okay. Um, I, I just gotta I just gotta see a scene where John Cena's in that uh, that house and Ramblin' Rabbit makes a cameo appearance and helps John Cena beat Bray Wyatt. That'd he be gives, great. He gives Ramblin' Finally, Rabbit an attitude adjustment. You know, be <laughs> right finally gets his revenge. <laughs> and Michael, if you had to pick one match of the entire weekend, man, what are you looking forward to the most? Ah, uh, you know what? I mean, I know that we said we should go in there with an open mind, but all CGI side, what they could possibly do, just straight wrestling. I'm actually looking forward to Daniel Bryan versus uh, Sami Zayn the most because I think just wrestling wise, it's going to be maybe match of the night. So okay, yeah. yeah, I I when I seen that, I was like, okay, so this actually they they could just do straight up wrestling with that match, and everyone would be okay with it. So um. And I love their whole Gulag and Brian thing. I'm actually enjoying that, <laughs> what I've seen on uh, Twitter. And that's actually pretty cool. Oh, yeah. The whole um, chest bump is hilarious. Yeah. Should be an interesting <laughs> event this weekend, being the two days. WrestleMania, too good for two nights. Or too good for one night. Keep mixing that up. But uh, it could be too dangerous for two nights. Well, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what they've taped. Should be an interesting event. It'll be a once in a lifetime, you know. No pun intended to the other... Heather modeled WrestleMania to use that around. 
But this is going to be a once in a lifetime kind of thing so far. We don't know if they'll do this in the future again with future pandemics, but it's going to be an interesting event. Um, other than that, guys, that's really all I had for the show. I do want to thank Michael and Brian for coming back on the No Holds Barred Network. They are a big part of this network getting up from the ground up. And I do want to thank both you guys for coming on. So thank you, Brian, for coming on and for doing this. Oh, no, thank you, man. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, I know we joke a lot and we might bash each other a lot. But, you know, like like you said, it's it's been a long time together and it's it's always good to be back. Yeah. And then if you guys I, – and I want to thank you too, Michael. Michael, yeah, you were a big, big part of this, this network from the ground up as well, a longtime fan and then becoming a co-host at one point. Uh, I do want to thank you for coming back as well and doing this show with me. Oh, absolutely. And I hope it doesn't have to take another epidemic for us three to get back together and do a reunion no, show. No, I was just going to say, if you guys want to come back again, I'm all I'm all for you guys coming back and doing another episode with me. So uh, I'm sure we're going to keep in touch after this. And who knows, guys, maybe Michael and Brian will be back uh, on a future episode uh, or episodes in the future. So uh, I know that whenever we do a big anniversary show for the network, I can count on these guys to come back. So uh thank you guys again guys ladies and gentlemen hope you guys are all staying safe out there make sure you are continuing to wash your hands practicing social distancing all that mumbo jumbo and i hope you guys enjoy wrestlemania this coming saturday and sunday that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the master's degree podcast right here in the holds bar network your source for all wrestling podcast content and more i'm your host as always the ceo and owner of the no holds bar network and the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I want to thank again my two co-hosts for today, Brian at Heel Turn 21 and at Michael Chow. He is uh, Michael Chow TV on Twitter, guys. Go give both those guys a follow. I'll put their links down in the description below. Thank you very much for tuning in live, guys, and listening back, downloading the episode. We're out of here. Take it easy, and uh, happy WrestleMania week. In my Something above